Hi, my name is Victoria Bradley and I'm one of the business advisors here at Bright Red Triangle. Hi, I'm Pete McLean, business advisor at Bright Red Triangle. Oh, it feels like forever ago. Um, we're here at Napier University as a fourth year student. I uh, decided to come up with the idea to sell Scottish food around the world. So I took that idea to the Moffat Centre, which is now Bright Red Triangle, um, and got things going and, and actually started selling produce from my bedroom. So it feels like a long time ago. What about you? Yeah, so I think I always knew I wanted to run my own business, but I never really knew how it was going to happen. Um, and I was working at Strathclyde University at the time, just graduated from uni in a marketing degree and um, I had an itch I wanted to scratch so I had a spare room at home and I wanted to rent it out but I didn't want someone to rent it out all the time. Okay. Before kind of Airbnb, not to age me, but um, I started to looking to try and find a way I could rent my room kind of part time to students and I couldn't find a solution so I started my business to fill a gap in the market that I needed myself. And that's how I kind of started my first business, part time while I was working, doing it evenings and weekends, and kind of growing it from there. Very good. So, how did you start? You had the idea. What did you do next? I had a start. Um, I had the idea. Did some market research. Um, contacted Princess Trust because I was under the age of thirty, and they, at the time they were giving away grants. I think for like two hundred pounds to do some market research. Not anymore. Uh, no, I don't <laughs> think so. Um, and then eventually I just decided that I thought there was an opportunity, found a web developer, um, begged them for a good rate, um, threw a website up and just started. And how long would you say you've been an entrepreneur? I think while I was at school I was always had entrepreneurial ideas, mm -hmm. whether I executed them or not was uh, a different thing. I certainly don't have a story where I had a paper round or I started a comic. But I knew certainly from maybe 12, 13 that I wanted to be my own boss. Mm. So I was kind of driven by creating something. Well, same as me really, I think, yeah. Um, rather than being, I want to make loads of money, I just wanted to create something. And that's kind of always been with me. Yeah. And then came up with the idea um, to sell Scottish food around the world at university. And uh, like you said, much like yourself, just got on with it and mm -hmm. had a go. Amazing. And I guess since you started, how many businesses have you had? Since I started, well, I've, I have a food and drink background, so I've always been felt safe and secure in food and drink. Um, so I would say I've had probably four or five businesses, mm. but maybe two or three hundred ideas. Exactly, the same as me, hundred <laughs> percent. So and still having ideas. I mean, that's one of the biggest problems is yeah. lying in bed at night thinking, "Oh, that'd be quite good." No one's done that. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I've started five businesses since I started my journey 10 years ago, they've all been completely different, but they've all been because I've seen a gap in the market for something that I need that I couldn't uh, find anyone to fulfill. So that's quite interesting. So be honest, how many domain names have you bought? Oh, hundreds, yeah. <laughs> I've got a list probably about 60 other ideas that I haven't pursued and I've got close to, of those five, there's probably another five behind the scenes that I've got really in-depth testing to the point of potentially launching, but just didn't move forward with. So you're obviously a business advisor now, mm. um, but you must have a business on the go. Yes, I do. I have a, a side hustle, as you would call it at the moment. And uh, I think it's important for people like us who advise students and are entrepreneurial to always have something kind of in the back burner going because that kind of feeds our, our fire and our fuel in the engine for sure. So I've got a, a little side hustle, which is a breast milk jewellery business. Right. Um, which happy to tell people about more if, if they'd like to know but um, no matter what the business is like I say I just think there's something within us that means we always need to have something that we're working on to feel fulfilled and valued really. I suppose it's about being creative. Yeah it's that output for sure it's, it's like my hobby like a lot of people play video games or have other kinds of hobbies for me it's starting businesses or growing brands for sure. Yeah, setting up e-commerce shops and yeah. researching things. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah causing myself stress and headaches. <laughs> Pretty much, hundred um, percent. And when you started your business, you know one of the things that students obviously ask us quite a lot is investment. Did you take investment? How did you start? So I was quite. When when I first started, mm. I had the grand plan. I wanted to open a healthy takeaway shop that 
served the surrounding area um, and I did a business plan and uh, realised that I needed to raise about half a million pounds to get yeah. that off the ground and quite often that's the stalling point for someone it's mm. like well I'm never going to raise half a million um, so actually I just worked it backwards to see where I could start to then set that as a goal to, to raise money so when I started it wasn't I'm not going to start until I get half a million pounds it's like how can I reach that goal maybe in a year or two mm -hmm. years time mm -hmm. So that's why I went right back and I could afford to buy a few of the Scottish produce products and produce mm -hmm. and start from there and actually just started from my bedroom at home, uh, still in my parents' house and, mm -hmm. and bought jams and yep. chutneys and chocolates and uh, sent them out from from my bedroom ultimately. And um, I think when pallets of food started arriving on the front mm -hmm. doorstep and I didn't have a forklift, I think that's when my folks started to say, you know, you need to maybe maybe move out. Yeah, about time. <laughs> so, you know, thinking about it, I've started a business each time I funded it completely differently. Okay. So the first time I funded it with a Princess Trust loan for about £20,000, which I'd recommend people really think about before they do it, because I'm still paying that off now. Yeah, because a lot, well, a lot of people, when they go for money, you think, this I'm big. a limited company, well, it's not going to come just, help me. You know, you, in your head, it's going to work. It's not yeah. even a consideration that it won't, which is amazing, but also, if it doesn't, you're left picking yeah. up the pieces. Um, second business, I won a lot of competition budget funding um, through Scottish Edge, so I got about 50k from Scottish Edge. Wow. So that kind of funded business number two, and then I had a friend, shall we say, that um, pumped some money into the business that really believed in me. Okay. You still friends? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> That's a story for a um, the third business, we found a partner who aligned with what we were doing and they put investment into the business, so that was actually an equity investment. Um, and um, this current business, I am just funding myself. Okay. So when you were raising money externally, what kind of things were they asking for? I mean, that's a question as a business advisor I get all the mm -hmm. time. It's, do I need a business plan? Do I need forecasting? Do I need to pay lots of money with an accountant? What kind of things were I mean, they asking yeah, for? they wanted to see the business plan, but to be honest, they were buying into us and our vision and our energy. The most important for them was the financial forecasting, because obviously they were giving us, I think it ended up 30K investment they gave us, and then they gave us access to their uh, facilities uh, to produce the product and their expertise as well. And we were able to use their... Um, um, chief financial officer as well to, to run our numbers past so it was absolutely financial forecasts uh, we aligned with the business we were a good culture fit and they just loved our passion but at the end of the day putting 30k of their own money into the business they had to know that they were going to get returns okay. was it stressful it was stressful but I don't know we found the right partner so it was much easier than I expected. With a previous business, um, the co-working space that I ran, I chased a lot of investment, I did a lot of pitches and I was looking for like 100k, 150k equity investment and I never found it and that was extremely stressful mm -hmm. compared to um, this business which uh, in which we just found a partner who aligned with our goals and we offered them a way to grow and they offered us a way to grow so it really complemented each other. Good. Yeah, for sure that was really good. What do you think is the hardest thing about being an entrepreneur? Hardest thing about being an entrepreneur? One of the things I suffered from probably the most was um, it being quite lonely. Mm -hmm. I think at the beginning, like, you, like all guns blazing, you've got lots to do, you're the mm -hmm. most confident person in the world. Um, but as you take your business into year two, year three and hit different problems, even when you have employees, it is quite lonely. Yeah. Um, and you're making those decisions by yourself or someone's not paying you, you know, all the difficult things when you're There's running a lot out of, of business. There's a lot of pressure. Huge pressure. And mm -hmm. I almost, I, I'm quite, I find it quite easy to compartmentalise most of the time. Mm -hmm. But sometimes if you're having a tough run um, and you've got wages to pay and if you think about it too deeply, you're like, well, if I don't pay those wages, that's someone's mortgage, they have kids, yeah. etc. And And ultimately, 10 years on, I had, I think about 36 staff mm. so not only is that a huge wage bill there's tax bills that mm. come with that and you're responsible so yeah it was a it can be quite lonely so I was very good at building up friends with fellow entrepreneurs in the same position mm -hmm. um, and I don't mean networking um, and going out and telling everyone everything's all right all the time because yeah. that used to really get to me it's actually finding a really close group of people 
you can have an honest discussion honest with, with and yeah. share that stress and once you've had that discussion they're there to help you as yeah. well so I found making um, uh, relationships and building relationships with fellow business people one of the best tips I got yeah for sure that's yeah invaluable just to kind of find your tribe of people that are going through and, the same thing as you and ultimately that's how we probably first met yeah that's true <laughs> you know, that's we both true. had we're running our own business at mm. the same time mm. and we met through PSYBT yeah and we used to have a supper club where we all used to meet just a small group of people and, and share the issues and yeah. that was hugely valuable yeah that was very valuable definitely. and a good curry yeah oh, for sure <laughs> and I think the thing with that is as well as much as your friends and family love you they'll never fully understand the pressure that you put yourself under um, so it's extra important to have those friends that are doing yeah. it too I, I completely agree and it's also for your partner as well you know then they're, they're there to support you and I got I, I've had a huge amount of support mm. but when you're in that position it, it, you even it can be very lonely yeah for sure I think one of the challenges for me as someone who thinks very entrepreneurially is the shiny new object syndrome which I think a lot of us suffer from Guilty. so yeah so I'll be working on an idea or developing a business as I am just now um, and suddenly I'll have another idea and I'll think, oh, I could do that, or yeah. I could add that on, or maybe that's what I should be doing. Um, so I think that's obviously um, an asset, but it's also an issue sometimes in trying to curb that uh, that feeling. So I suppose it's, it's about remaining focused. Yeah. So, so how, do you, how do you counteract that? What do you do? What, what tips have you got? Oh, I'm still trying to work that one out, I think, but um, I think... A little bit of it does come down to allowing yourself to have those creative thoughts and maybe just testing them because I think it is important to um, to do that, to allow yourself to process those thoughts rather than just saying no. Um, I've always kind of ran two businesses at once, if I'm being honest. I've always had something else kind of in my head or on the back burner. So, Multitasking. Yeah, I think it is quite healthy for me to do that. But um, it's important, I think, now for me to realise when I'm onto a good thing and I'm trying to focus way more on looking at the financial element of the business because that's something mm -hmm. that I'm not strong at. Um, understanding where there is an opportunity and trying to really focus down on that. Is that understanding what you want from the business? I think that's extremely important and a lot of people maybe don't take the time to think about that as well mm -hmm. because, um, you know, if you're running a business, you might be doing it part-time just you know for fun you might be doing it as a, a lifestyle business as they say or you might be trying to grow something for investment but unless you really take the time to think about what you want from a business you'll never really build the right business for you I suppose it's okay to have different things from a business yeah I remember when I started it was very much if I met entrepreneurs and they just wanted a small business as a sort of lifestyle business and a bit of extra money I used to get hugely frustrated that I was like well why aren't you Making so it massive and true. getting big. But actually, I don't know if it comes with age, but looking at some of the people that have it as a side hustle, which many yeah. students here have yeah. while they're a student, it's, um, it's, it's a bit of extra income, it's a bit of fun, and actually it helps their learning. Yeah, for sure. So, oh, it, I mean, it helps you in so many ways to absolutely. evolve your life skills. I think we came into business at a weird time in the Scottish entrepreneurial ecosystem where there was that massive push to be as big and, as you can be and get as much investment as you can. Yeah. And it wasn't healthy and it wasn't the right fit for a lot of people um, and people were steered in the, the wrong direction. But I'd like to think as business advisors now at least we've had that experience and we can help people to really shape yeah. the kind of businesses that they want around the life that they want yeah. as well. As long as the business owner understands what they want from the business, that's a very good starting point. Exactly, for sure. And I guess what would you say is one of the best things about being an entrepreneur? One of, one of the things I enjoy the most is learning. Mm. Um, and I think that comes back, like, obviously I'd like to be rich and make lots of money, uh, but I, I really enjoy the learning process. Yeah. So again, it's, it's, it's about, here's a challenge, how can I try and fix that challenge, mm -hmm. or how can I solve that problem, mm -hmm. and then going out and trying to find how you can do it. And it's, it, it's even as, you know, it, I'll, I'll try and teach myself a little bit of coding, or I'll try and yeah. find a platform that can make it more efficient. But also on the other side of that, I would say, uh, recognize your own skills. Sure. Um, if you get to a certain stage and you're spending every hour of the day trying to code a website, yeah, outsource it. Yeah, you know your time is your time is the most valuable thing. But I really enjoy the learning process. Yeah, I think entrepreneurs are naturally just problem solvers. That's what we are for sure. I mean, for me, the thing that I think I enjoy most about entrepreneurship is seeing something go from zero to one 
So mm -hmm. it's that, like you say, a little seed of an idea and then you growing that from that seed to getting your first sale or your first 10 sales. Yeah. It's just an incredible feeling to feel that you've made that happen. Um, I love brand building and developing brands and stuff like that, as you know. And um, it's just incredible to see where you can get to in three months, for example. Definitely. Yeah, for sure. And I guess then finally, you know, we've got lots of students that we work with. There's lots of people within the university that we hadn't worked with. What would you say to those kind of people who are thinking about entrepreneurship or kind of think they want to be an entrepreneur? Like what? What, what I would say to someone that's thinking about becoming an entrepreneur is come and see us. You know, you have ideas um, at any time at university, but you also can come and see us without an idea. Yeah. Um, and another important thing is, don't worry if you've come to us with an idea before. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've sort of discovered that over the last couple of years is people are sometimes maybe a bit embarrassed to come back. It's like, I saw them, I had this idea, I didn't do anything with it. Yeah. Uh, I can't go back to them, it's quite embarrassing. Absolutely not. Yeah. We, we all have tons of ideas all the time. They don't work out. And might might be your third, fourth, tenth, hundredth idea that yeah. works out. So so our doors are always open. Yeah, I think testing is just is the key, really. You know, you feel like you want to be an entrepreneur, you've got an idea. Just start, like, testing things. You know, don't yeah. be scared to ask people for their opinions, to just test the market, to do the research. Uh, and just a little bit of iteration each week or each day can really get you to a good point. Um, I love discussing ideas with students, like you say as well, like just having a general chit chat around yeah. a subject and feeding in, that's like what we live for. So yeah, absolutely. I mean, absolutely doors are open all the time for that kind of thing. Well, it was good to know more about your journey, Pete. Yeah, it's, uh, it's always great chatting to fellow entrepreneurs. For sure. Time for, for sure. some lunch? Absolutely. Let's go. Let's do it. <laughs>